Hey guys, so welcome to Vlogmas day 11. I figured I would do a little bit of a QA. and a I actually haven't done a QA and a in a very, very long time on this channel. So my eye looks a little crazy. I've been trying my hardest not to itch it, but I was cuddling with my cat. I'm allergic to cats, so it is what it is. Hello. So I had to write down your guys' questions because I am filming from my phone. So I wrote them down, okay? So bear with me. There's quite a few, but I'm gonna try my hardest not to like ramble too much. Is there a reason you won't consider a weight loss surgery? So back in the day, I would have never considered it, but it's definitely something that I have considered a lot in the last year. I even went to a weight loss doctor where I was ready to throw down $30,000 and be like, here, I want weight loss surgery. But for some reason, he told me I'd lose weight slower if I would get weight loss surgery. I kind of want to go back to him and re-talk to him and be like, yo, I really want this. But there is someone who I honestly adore because I actually watched them on a TV show who has inspired me and we've been talking and she really wants to help me talk to her weight loss surgery doctor and it's just something that is definitely up in the air something I'm still thinking about because it's hours and hours and hours away and I don't know if I can withstand a car ride like that but it's definitely something in my mind should Becky be driving in her condition so I know a lot of people care about Becky and I know some people just like the entertainment of like, oh, what's wrong with Becky? Is she on benzos? Like what? No. Becky is totally okay to drive. She's okay to cook. She's okay to do literally anything. And I got full permission from Becky to say this in just short form. Becky is experiencing very bad depression. What is causing this huge wave of depression is a mood stabilizer that she got put on that actually is not interacting well with what she needs. Her psychiatrist is working really hard to decrease the medicine dosage because this is a type that if you completely stop it cold turkey, it can really, really mess with your mental state. So it's sad to watch. It's been sad for all of us, her family, her friends, and it's even worse for her because she's the one having to deal with it. And it is such a huge change and her psychiatrist is doing everything she can to stop this from happening. And it's, it's sad because there are some medications out there who will turn you into a zombie, if you will. But I also don't want people to be afraid of taking mood stabilizers or antidepressants because they really can't help. I am a case of that because the medicine that's not working for Becky is actually the one that I'm on that is working for me. The biggest regret this year, by far it's not losing. <laughs> it's not losing a really big chunk of weight, which is what I always plan on every single year. And unfortunately I failed another year. I might be losing weight now, but I should have done it months and months ago. Do you think your childhood is why you binge? 100% because I started binging very young. I'm talking seven years old. I would stuff my face, I would get sick, and I did it because I was turning to food as a comfort because of everything that was going on in my life because I was in pain, I was traumatized, I was constantly, cattail, I was constantly crying and I don't want to like get into it, but it was just a really bad childhood. But I will say a lot of people experience bad childhoods and they don't become a binge eater or a food addict. And there are food addicts and binge eaters who didn't have a bad childhood. It just, it really just depends on everyone. Like everyone's circumstances are different. But for me, 100%, I blame my childhood. But it's up to me, the person I am now, to fix this. It's not... I can't go back and change something that's already happened. I can only change now. Would you ever collaborate with Beauty? Beauty. <laughs> oh my God, I always get tongue tied when I say her name, but yes, I would totally collab with Chantel if I ever met her. How's Twinkie doing? Twinkie is doing amazing. It's like it never happened. And I didn't wanna talk about this, but there have been calls, 
to animal control. And whenever they show up here, they apologize to me. They feel bad that they have to come here because of people's false accusations. And every time they come here because of one of you calling them, they feel bad for me. They come here and they see my cats, they see my dog, and they say that they're healthy. And the funny thing is, the animal control guy that came today, yes, it happened today. I was gonna make a whole video about it, but you know what? I'm not gonna do that. His side worker, because animal control always comes with two people. And he actually saw me at the vet with Twinkie just a couple weeks ago. And it's little things like that where it's like Twinkie has a rabies tag. And I do everything I can for Twinkie. And you guys are wasting the time, valuable time, by calling 911, by calling animal control for reasons that you don't need to. I take care of my animals like they're my freaking soul. They are my heart. The guy was actually explaining to me today that the second time he ever showed up here because he has i'm literally like a friend to him now like he knows me through and through i swear he has watched my youtube because he told me some things today that you know ease my mind that he can understand why he's getting these calls because there are people out there who literally are here to make my life miserable the second time that he actually showed up here there were times where people are calling in and there could be a kid on the other line choking or, or there could be like an actual animal truly truly in pain and it's just not okay because you're wasting their time and their resources for something so silly he told me that everything i did regarding twinkie and the pain that she was having was correct and i just don't understand why people think it's okay to call me an animal abuser when i am the literal farthest from it my vet sees that I take care of my animals. The freaking animal control sees that. And it's like, you can't keep bothering these people with things that aren't true. But to the people who really do care about Twinkie and cared about her well-being, she is doing amazing. Like I am, ugh, I was really scared. And it's just good to see that it was probably just like a tiny pulled muscle or something. But the minute it starts happening again, I do want to say thank you to the people who actually showed me that there's a 24-hour vet hospital. You know, also the guy told me today, because I explained to him, I was like, there's no 24-7 um, vet hospitals around here. And he was like, actually, there is one. But the reason why you didn't think so is because on Google, it says that there isn't. But there is one. And I do know that now. Thanks to you guys and also thanks to him because I had no idea because when I was Googling, the actual place showed up that it was closed. So it's like my brain just automatically was like, okay, then I guess it's closed. But now that I know that there's actually a doctor who stays there even after closed hours. And I know that now thanks to you guys. So I do want to say thank you. So now I know in the future, there is somewhere I can go if something happens at 4 a.m. So again, thank you. Like I wouldn't ever just not take Twinkie because I didn't want to. Who cares about hanging out with my friends? Who cares about going to Walmart? Who cares about going to Chili's? It wasn't about that. I would choose Twinkie over anything. Why did you deny a bladder infection? So I'm pretty sure I remember what you're talking about. It's because when I said that I was referring to cellulitis because people were asking me, oh, what is it, a bladder infection? But I was talking about like my major issue, which to me was my cellulitis. So I didn't mean to deny a bladder infection. So I apologize for that if it came off that way. How do you handle the hate you receive? I ignore it to the best of my ability. That's honestly the best answer that I have. And also it's because I know who I am and the people around me know who I am as a person. What are your new year's resolutions? Honestly, weight loss, um, I have some exercise resolutions, some YouTube resolutions, and I think I'm going to make like a whole separate video or just literally just make it a part of a vlog. I do want to talk about those goals I have for 2020. Who is your dream YouTuber to collab with? I have two. Learning to be fearless and Shane Dawson. Those would be my top two, but of course, so many more. Um, a lot of my YouTube friends, I would literally, it's more so like I would love to meet them. It's not just about like, oh, collabing. Like I would love to meet Pink Sparkles, uh, Carly Steele, Nikocado Avocado. Like there's just a lot. There's a lot of YouTubers I would love to meet. Like Jeffree Star, whoa. Trisha Paytas. I'll just meet them all. 
if I ever met David Dobrik, that would be insane. Probably never gonna happen. Like we're on two completely different levels. I mean, but so is me and Jeffree Star and like, Ugh, I'm just like some loser like here in Kentucky while everyone else is just like amazing. Would you ever do a subscriber recipe video? Yes, I actually would. Does Twinkie get along with the other pets in the house? Yes, all the pets get along. And honestly, if they didn't, it, it, I'd have to move because I, I want my pets to be comfortable and happy in the home that they're in. And also I want Eric and Ricky's dogs to be comfortable and happy in their home, you know? How is your lymphedema? It's... It's the same. I will say though, you know what? It's not the same because with weight loss, when you eat less sodium and when you drink more water and you move more, the lymphedema stops being so hard and uncomfortable. Instead, it becomes a little bit more, how do I explain? I try to explain it to my friends all the time. It's more like softer and it's more like manageable and it gets just the tiniest bit smaller. Who will you be spending Christmas with? I'm gonna be having like three, four, five Christmases. Uh, my friends, Becky's friends, our friends, her family, like several like different things with her family. Okay, maybe like seven Christmases, I don't know. It's just gonna be like a lot of different groups of people. So I'm just gonna have a very large family. Like I'm super excited, it's gonna be, a pretty busy I'd say week or so of just like really fun Christmas stuff I am gonna say bittersweet my birthday is December 27th and that is when we're gonna be celebrating one of the Christmases see a lot of people when I was younger they were like do you not like having your birthday in like December do you feel like you get left out and I never understood what they meant I was always like what does that mean like I love having my birthday in December but now I get it I feel like it's such a weird time. It's right after Christmas, like right after the holidays where everyone's like spending their money and they're like super exhausted and they're resting up for New Year's. And I'm over here like, hi, my birthday. Hello, hello, do you see me? Why are you so afraid of doing a weigh-in? I don't think afraid is the right word. I think it's just something I wanna keep to myself until I reach a goal. And I feel like I keep repeating myself and it's probably really annoying but that's just what I wanna do. What's your favorite childhood story to tell people? I actually have a few. I don't wanna bore anyone, so I'll just say them kind of quickly. So these are actually stories that my parents have told me like back when I lived with them. These are things that they have told me. These are things that they tell other people. And me and my dad were actually reminiscing, reminiscing, <sighs> me and my dad were actually reminiscing about these stories just a couple months ago via Facebook Messenger. One of them, which is really funny, when I was like six years old, when we would do Easter egg hunting, when it was Easter, obviously what? Every egg I'd pick up, I'm gonna add again, I was six. Every egg that I'd pick up, I'd lick it, <laughs> expecting it to taste like the color. Like if it was green, I thought it was gonna taste like apple. If it was purple, I thought it was gonna taste like grape. Why was I like this? I don't know. This is another food one, but it's funny. And my dad thinks it's really funny. So I was five, six, seven, like I'm so bad with time frames, but it was definitely around that time. And it was actually the night before Thanksgiving. And what my family used to do is my grandma would cook the turkey while we were sleeping. And she would constantly check it, obviously, like we don't want to fire or anything. But, <laughs> oh my God, this is so embarrassing. He just thinks it's so funny. I slept, I can't even say it. I slept in front of the oven and I said, dad, I'm gonna guard the big chicken. What? Oh my God, it's so embarrassing. Like I'm gonna guard the big chicken, like what? Another one actually, which is on video. I have seen that when I was younger. I was wearing, I was a shorty, like I was probably four. Um, I was wearing this really big puffy 49ers jacket because my grandma loved 49ers. And this goose is charging after me. It ran me over. A goose. And this is on video. And I wish I had it so I could show you guys. It's honestly super funny. <laughs> I started running away like screaming in my puffy like 49ers jacket. And all of a sudden it's like... <laughs> Oh my God, I started crying like an actual crazy. I have so many other stories, but those are just like some ones off the top of my head. 
Are they funny to you guys? I don't know. Who's your favorite character on The Walking Dead? So I'm not gonna say if these people have died or if they haven't because if you haven't caught up, but I'm just gonna say Beth and Daryl, the end. Are you following a specific diet? I'm actually not. How many people do you consider true friends? I would say a few, a handful. I went like this. I'm just imagining all my little friends in my hand. <laughs> what were you like as a teen? Long story short, I think that I rebelled because I was going through a lot. I was in foster care again. And so I started smoking weed and I started drinking. I either ditched school or didn't care about school. And then until finally, I was about 16 and a half, 17, I finally got my together because my last foster home was just like, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to stop, you know, not caring about school. You need to graduate when you're supposed to. They just really beat it into my head that I needed to be different than my parents. Do you think people dislike you only because of rumors? I have witnessed this firsthand that yes, there is a large portion of people who dislike me based on rumors, but there are also a pretty big portion of people who dislike me because of their own reason, which I totally get that. But yes, I have seen people literally in the comments or back yandi when i say yandi i mean yonder i don't know why i talk the way i do but back in the day um i would read forums which i don't anymore because i physically can't they literally make my soul hurt but i would see people like especially in the comment section like oh my god i don't understand why this person gets so much hate she seems like such a genuine person i've been watching her for a few weeks or i've been watching her for a few days or whatever it is and then people will comment like some rumors about me that aren't even true. And then the person will reply, oh my God, that's horrible. Now I just, I don't like her either. Like you just liked me. And now just because one person replied with a bunch of hogwash, now you dislike me. So I will say people have some valid reasons. And then other people, which is a large portion of people is just like, they jump on this train and they have fun with it, which I understand. I've actually talked to Becky about this a lot, that if I wasn't Amber Lynn, but I watched Amber Lynn on YouTube, I would also have fun with the drama. I'm gonna be honest. Like it's, it's entertaining to watch other people's drama when you don't want to deal with your own. And that's just the truth. Would you say you have hoarding tendencies? So I get a lot of people telling me that I'm a hoarder and I have tons of stuff, da da da. I want to let you guys know I think it's a shopping addiction more than a hoarding tendency because I am on the daily. I have an actual section in the den, which I can show you guys in my vlog tomorrow or whatever, of an area. It's like my get rid of pile. Every single day, I put at least one thing in that get rid of pile. And I let my friends go through it or I give it to Goodwill. Like it doesn't even matter. But. I literally just got rid of a whole box of stuff. It just piles up and piles up until someone wants to look through it or what have you. In my opinion, a hoarder keeps everything they buy. For me, if I buy 10 dresses, I'm gonna get rid of two. I used to have so many journals. I used to have so many perfumes. Like I had moments where I had a large quantity of certain things, but I don't do that anymore. I get rid of a lot of stuff you guys every single day I'm getting rid of something for me I almost prefer getting rid of stuff than actually buying stuff because every time I get rid of something it kind of feels like there's like a little bit of a weight just like coming off of my shoulders and it feels good I love just like purging stuff honestly it is a lot of fun to me and if you guys saw everything that I owned you guys would be like wow she actually doesn't own a lot of stuff. It's actually kind of sad, really. Are you scared you won't ever lose weight? This is something that I think about every single day. Am I losing weight now? Yes. Could I eventually stop? Yes. You know how many times I've lost weight and then gained it back? I, I don't even know if I can count that high. I truly am scared that I will always be this big. I am terrified of it. And I know I'm the only one who can change this. I literally am the only one who can change this. And I always tell myself that. It's like, 
Amberlynn, you can change this. It's not someone else. You don't have to wait for someone else to come change it. You don't have to tick tock, tick tock. Why won't anyone help me? No, it's literally like Amberlynn, no, you don't have to wait for anything. Like just do it yourself, like do it now, hi. But it's so hard when I fight with myself constantly over, oh my God, I need to binge. Like I need to binge so bad. Like it's scary. It is so scary. Like right before I'm about to binge, like the feeling that comes over me. And I know a lot of people, a lot of you can understand that. And the food addict in me is just constantly like, food is key. Food is what I need to numb myself and to make myself feel better. And I want crunchy things sometimes. And I want salty and I want chocolatey and I want this and I want that. It's very hard. So having those things makes me like, am I ever fully truly going to change for the rest of my life? Let's just say one day I did reach 170 pounds, which is my goal weight. It doesn't end there. I have to fight this every single day for the rest of my life. It's honestly a scary future because no matter what I do, I'm gonna be fighting a food addiction, a binge disorder, and it's all my fault. And that's just reality. What would be your last meal on death row? Honestly, nothing. If I knew I was fixing to die, I wouldn't be eating. When I'm really nervous about something, my stomach hurts and I can't eat. So that would probably be the most nervous, frightening thing in this whole freaking world. So I would not be eating. I don't know how people do it. Maybe it's because they accept, they just accept it. They're just like, I'm gonna die, that's that. I would not be able to accept it. I'd be, I'd be done, I couldn't do it. What is your favorite Christmas memory? This is super easy and parents out there, if you have any kids watching right now, pause it and tell them to leave the room because I don't want to be the one. I don't want to be the one. Um, This is actually how I found out that Santa wasn't real. I would sleep, again, I was young, I was eight. Um, I was still with my parents at the time and this was right before I got taken from them. So. I would sleep in the living room right next to the Christmas tree every single Christmas because I wanted to see Santa. I wanted to see Santa so bad. So I was eight years old, maybe I was seven. I was eight or seven, just living my best life, sleeping. And all of a sudden I hear this loud noise and my mom was right next to the Christmas tree and her water had broke. She was going in labor with my baby brother. And she didn't know that I was awake. And I heard her say to my dad, I was putting Santa's gifts under the tree and my water broke. That is how I found out there was no longer any Santa. I thought there was Santa for a very long time. And all of a sudden he was no longer, but I also got my baby brother who I miss a lot. Um, he was actually put in close adoption a very, very long time ago. So um sorry that yeah that's my favorite memory because he was born on christmas and who it was it was just a special day and it was just funny how it happened and how i found out about santa and stuff like like i'll always remember that what is your biggest trigger food honestly oh my god i'm, I'm so right i'm sorry uh, my biggest trigger food i don't really have like a trigger food i have trigger situations honestly easy off the bat trigger for me is going out to eat. So the last question is, do you think your viewers know the real you? Honestly, no. By reading the comments and seeing reaction channels and the way that people think of me, I know that they don't know the real me. And I think that's my fault. That is thoroughly my fault because I portray myself as someone that I don't mean to portray myself as and all i can do is try to fix that me and eric was actually talking about this today how it's so hard to like be ourselves on camera it really is and there are times where the true me comes out like literally me sitting here and just filming this video this is me i'm just very casual it just it sucks and i have told myself i would literally i would totally do it spend a, spend the day with a hater or a troll or whatever you want to call it yourselves like because i would love for people to see me as a person and to see me 
in real life and how I am and how I interact with others and my pets and just just how I am on the daily in like a normal setting versus seeing me as a YouTuber. Just a person on your guys' phone screen or TV screen or laptop screen or however you watch me. I want to be more than that and sometimes it's hard for me to like show that or convey that. And again, that's just my fault. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys for Vlogmas day 12 tomorrow. Bye.